fact, my oaks uh, run a little low. Probably should have shot a bigger elk. But anyway, for next year we're hoping for to get two tags. Maybe I'll come home a little bit more. Don't mind the garage. So what I normally like to do along these sinew lines, I'll take and clean everything up. I've never tried to eat it, so I don't know necessarily that it tastes bad. I would imagine it makes it chewy. And I've always heard Brother Steve Ranilla say to cut it out. So, plus Arlo likes the uh, likes the extras that I leave him. So we'll go on here, on these, and I'll make a bunch of little steaks out of it. Okay, we got all the uh, elk meat trimmed up, got them pretty clean, got them in nice little steaks. The way that I normally like to do it, I set my pan here to the side and make sure that it is dry. And then what I'll do is I'll pat dry the rest of the meat. Now, it don't have to be perfectly dry because it will take um, seasoning better if it is a little damp, but I don't like it to be soaking wet either and then just all the seasoning run off. So what I'll do from here is I'll lay all the meat out in this pan like so this is the discord pile that's Arlo's help me I think he's wanting some all right so what I'll do from here is get it all on this and we'll take get this ready for vegetables And this is something I struggled with with just regular beef steaks for a while. Be really generous with your amount of seasonings that you use. This is flake salt. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube, his name is Sue V. Everything, and he probably has the best steak channel that I've watched. And um, he recommended flake salt, and since I've been using flake salt, <clears throat> it's kosher is what it is. I got this at Rouse's. Um, it seems to me that it takes to the beef better for whatever reason. And I normally put, and you can get a little closer if you want to, I normally try to put a very liberal amount all over it. And I, I always under season my steaks. And then for a long time, and then I'm just speaking of, of beef steaks, not even wild game and for a long time what I did wrong um, I, w I was always about like trying to marinate them and soak them and I've actually learned that the steak is best that the steak is best by just taking it straight out patting it dry trying to get a lot of the blood off of it and this right here is a garlic season it's got some pepper in it in, in fact I'm not exactly sure what all they use it for um, I use it on everything. It's more like a barbecue season when you buy at the local butcher. And uh, I try to give a very liberal amount of that too. And the only spices that I use are garlic, salt, and pepper. Um, I don't do any type of soaking. And I had always grown up, mom had always marinated everything. So I use fresh ground pepper all the time. And uh, mom and them for my birthday. Actually, it was Caitlin. For my birthday got me this because I'd be just sitting over there just twisting, 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 just getting wore out. So anyway, so this is what I'll do. You can make it coarser or finer. And it all depends. Since I've been eating these elk steaks, I, I try not and um, I try not over pepper them when I eat beef for whatever reason. I uh I have a tendency to put a lot more pepper than what I do with elk. Um, and I do have a tendency probably with elk to add a little bit more salt. To add a little bit more salt to it. Um, and I don't really know why. So anyways, we'll flip them over like this. Because I normally try not and pull the meat straight out of the refrigerator and then go straight to cooking. The reason I don't do that is, is because the center of the steak will remain colder. And 
what will happen is, is the outsides will cook and then you'll come up with a very uneven cook. So what, we, what I've started doing is, is I'll try to leave the meat out for several hours and try to get it to room temperature. And that way that I can throw it in. And this is with leaner meat. You know, I, I started doing this with uh, thicker steaks and I noticed that I had a better cooked steak. Um, and I would imagine probably with any meat that it would be okay to do that. So what I'll do is, y'all have already seen me season, so you see about how I season. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and season both of these sides. I've got the one side done. And we'll probably let it sit for another, it's 5.43 now, we'll probably let them sit for 15, 20 minutes and season it. And normally I try to season about an hour before I cook them. Um, I was outside uh, shooting my bow, so I didn't come in here in time uh, to let them sit for a full hour. Camera I was recording with died. So it's no longer useful. So I got my onions, garlic, thyme, all the meat seasoned and sitting ready to go. I normally have mushrooms. But my wife, the camera lady right there, she refused to go get the mushrooms. Said she had just came back from the grocery store. So no mushrooms. Over here, I have this skillet. What I will do is I'll turn the burner on high. I'll get it piping hot. And then I'll turn around, like, like literally turn around. And then I'll dump a little bit of olive oil in it. Once I get the olive oil in there, I'll wait till it starts smoking a little bit. And I just like to get just, just a little bit of olive oil, not a whole lot and then what we'll do from there here it is i'll start adding butter i'll start adding the thyme and then i'll start adding the garlic once all the steaks are cooked and i do have the juices from the steaks and the, the butter to kind of make almost like a gravy i'll add my onions in and if i had mushrooms i would cook like like a topper for the steaks so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'll slice the garlic and how i like to slice the garlic is from the side when I'm cooking it. And I mean, I'm not saying that this is the way that it has to be done. I'm just saying this is the way that I do it. And when I'm cooking it with steaks, I don't like to mince it. I would prefer it to be sliced. And no, I have not cut my finger yet. And yes, Gordon Ramsay has emailed me about a job. <laughs> So what I'll do is I'll get that sliced up and I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me slice every one of these. And I'll take and then I'll slice my onions up this way. So I'll get them in there lengthways. I'll turn around. And I don't, I'm kind of torn here. You know, do I, do I want them cut, you know, up again or I really don't know. So normally I'll just, we'll just cut them in half. I'll break that up that way. In the time, my wife, not time as in like TikTok, but time as in time. My wife, she complains about it when I put the whole stock in there. So I'm debating on whether or not. I'll start crying here in a second. So, um, I'm debating whether or not whether to put the whole stock in there or just taking and, and pull them all off onto the steak. Gosh. Alright, so I got everything chopped up. Caitlin, I have demoted Adrienne to dog potty duty. And Caitlin's now I'm gonna start crying. Good lord. Caitlin is now running the video camera. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the skillet on. Go ahead and turn the skillet on. And it's already hot because we had it in the oven when we were cooking the potatoes, which are the potatoes. I didn't cook the potatoes, my mother in law did. They're going to be delicious. So we'll let this get real good and hot. We'll go ahead and slice our butter up. Fancy garbage can. Alright, so this is what we're going to do. We'll slice our butter up, and I normally don't add the butter. I add it up, and the butter is normally cold too. But the way that I add the butter, I add it up in sections. Um, so I'm not putting it all. So I'm not putting all the whole stick in there, and then it just cooks down. For whatever reason, the butter really cooks down really fast. So we'll go ahead and add the olive oil and we'll wait till it starts smoking. 
I will pre-warn y'all, when you start cooking like this, it's going to get really smoky. There's no getting around it anyway. We have a vent. A lot of time the vent isn't even good enough, and I should have cleaned the workstation up a little better, but the vent isn't even good enough. We'll just go ahead and open the windows and do something about that sort. But I'll add just to lightly cover the pan. The, what is this thing called? The skillet. Super hot. And this is how I normally tell it's hot enough is when we're getting smoke coming off of the olive oil. From here, I'll turn it not low, but I'll turn it down some. And we'll start adding in. I want to stand back. Let me get. I'll start adding in. Oh, pot. Okay. I really don't have a time frame on how long I let them cook. One, two, three, four, five. Let's put one more small in. Okay. So from here, go ahead and add a handful of garlic. And also, a little bit of butter. Alright, so it looks like we're getting pretty close to being done. I don't have a great sear on these, like far as a crispy edge, but they're getting done in the in the middle of getting where it needs to be. I'll see what we'll do. Let those sit for just a second. I'm gonna give y'all a cut test just so y'all can see. Alright, that one's done. And I try to cook every little piece and it's all really good I mean you're not gonna eat, when you're eating elk you're not gonna get no big 16 ounce 20 ounce you know ribeye that one's done too all right this one's done too put this one more time all right, so what we'll do is we'll take we'll take this piece and come over here. I'll bring it over here to the front so y'all can see. Let's sit for just a second. Let me turn this down. Adrian, you can take over here. So what we'll do, I'll get where you can see when cut. All right, here we go. And I would consider that probably, I don't know, let's say medium rare to a slight medium. Put that right there. Should be a pretty nice shot. And the way, I don't eat it with ketchup or nothing like that. Well, growing up, I always eat ketchup with everything. And this just turns out to be, it's super tender. I mean, the flavor, I don't really know how to describe it. This is probably the best meat you've ever had in your whole life. Um, the way that, give me something to drink. The way that my wife and my sister, they only eat filet. That's what they just like better, and I like ribeye. Um, to me, Try a piece of it. Am I allowed? Yeah, you can come over here. Can my hand be on this video? Yeah. Um, to me, it's like if a filet tasted like a ribeye. So you get the all the big flavors of a ribeye with elk. I think. Well, when we was when I was a kid, my dad passed through the church. We had a guy that gave us a cow that was grain fed, and I, from what I remember. The grain-fed cow seemed to be a little bit more sweeter than just like a store-bought cow. That may just be in my head. This would be the closest thing that I could compare to that. So it, you know, to me, there's no other meat that I've ever had that's been better than this. All right, so the battery died. Here's the battery. It's gonna be cut a little bit of the video I was talking about. I was talking about Trenton had done some deer this way. I didn't get to taste it myself. I would assume that it cooks the same way. This isn't even the back strap. 
I mean, this is just pieces of the ham and shoulder that I had told the butcher I want as many steaks as possible. And just since we've been here, since I've let it sit for the past few minutes, it's went from a, probably a medium rare to a medium. Uh, and that's just where the heat's go ahead and uh, radiate throughout the meat. My tips would be, do not overcook. If you cut it and it's too underdone, put it back in there, you know, cook it just for a little bit. Um, I think it serves well with potatoes. I would probably do fried potatoes. I think we done mashed potatoes the last time. Adrian's doing, what are you doing? What kind of potatoes are we doing this time? Harvest potatoes. We did harvest potatoes and green beans. It is delicious. I wouldn't, you know, probably eat elk any other way. In fact, I'm gonna try every animal from here on out this way. Hope y'all enjoyed. Let me know how y'all's recipe goes. If you want to add stuff, take away stuff. Like I said, normally do mushrooms. Uh, the thyme is really great. I've seen people do parsley and even red wine. So y'all have a good one. Till next time.